I get young children as young as 11, 12 years old, 13 years old, because of social media, they hear these statements all the time. And unfortunately, the media now is flooded with topics on sexuality from a very, very young age. So I get these questions asked, and I'm sure you as parents will as well. She says, or they say to me, what is a crush? I have a crush on so-and-so. Kids as young as grade one say, I have a crush on so-and-so. And today I even got asked by some young uh, girls at the school, very, quite young, maybe 10, 11, 12 years old, what is a crush? Is it halal to have a crush? So let's first of all understand what is a crush in the English language in the Western society? What does it mean? So if you look up the dictionary, anything, the Oxford or the Merriam-Webster, or you look up the Cambridge or the uh, any, any kind of uh, English dictionary, and you'll find a similar meaning, which means a crush is a strong and intense feeling which makes you think that you like someone but it is temporary and usually you like someone who you know is highly unlikely you will ever be with. This thing called a crush can take you into seriously dangerous areas from an Islamic perspective and from an emotional mental perspective. People with crushes can get obsessed with their crush. It can sometimes be a celebrity, religious or non-religious. It can be someone at school because they got interested in what they see on social media, let's say a particular hairstyle or a particular look, and they go to school and they see that boy or that girl who looks like that person they saw on social media, and they find that oh, he or she is my crush. Sometimes they have some interests that they find that maybe they have the same as them, and then they say, I've got a crush. This thing can be obsessive, and a person can turn into a stalker. They can follow that person, look at their social media page. They can, um, every time they're around, they act different, they act weird. Some of them, they, if they come on a tram or by transport, they'll probably go and deliberately wait outside the school, probably unsupervised, and then wait for the particular tram, particular transportation where they know that crush is going to be on, or they'll wait out school and wag, or they'll do a lot of things that really makes them misbehave just for their crush. Uh, it can lead you to obsession. They can stop eating, they can stop drinking, they can stop sleeping if they get too much and follow this desire of a crush. So brothers and sisters, it is a dangerous thing. Crush means it truly will crush you if you follow that desire. However, brothers and sisters, please understand me. Having a crush is just another name of this natural feeling that especially young people. The younger you are, the more you'll have this. The older you are, the less likely, because you understand life and you have more experience in understanding people, uh, emotions and relationships, and you focus on what really matters. You start to understand life better. But when you're younger, you have a fantasy, you have this imagination that goes through your head. And it makes you feel good. When you have a crush, it gives you those special tingly, they call it butterfly feelings in your stomach. Okay, I'm even sure that some older people have felt that when they got engaged and they had some interest. It's very normal. So these girls asked me, boys don't usually talk about it, but they even have crushes, but they just don't know what to call it. Girls are very smart with wording, so they know what they're saying and they, mashallah, they ask these questions. So having a crush is sometimes out of your control. It's just a feeling that comes to you. The community, your friends talk to you, what you see on social media affects you. And so you feel, oh, I like that boy, I like that girl. So that feeling, if it's out of your control and it just came to you, it's not a sin, it's not haram, but acting on it becomes haram, acting on it. So if you follow that feeling of crush, because it's kind of a romantic thing, right? I like that boy, I like that girl, romantically. And they think it's called love, but it's not love, right? And especially if they're very young, they're not ready for marriage. They don't know what marriage is, they don't know what relationships are. So they're exploring. Uh, we got to educate them for parents to sit with their daughters and their sons to tell them what is a crush, define it to them, tell them why it's not good to follow in that feeling in Islam because it's going to make you, it's going to break your heart, it's going to hurt your feelings, it's not real, it's a fantasy, right? It's just something that doesn't really exist. And what happens is that it lasts for about a few weeks to two months, some people even to four months. 
these girls said, how long does it last? I said six months, just in case. And inshallah, it does, it does go away. So these are, if you do feel something like that, brothers and sisters, I always advise my brothers and sisters this. Are you ready for marriage? Can you get married? Can you go and start the process and, you know, meet the family and ask for her hand? And it doesn't have to be marriage straight away, but can you get engaged? Are you ready to meet people to get married? Are you old enough? Are you mature enough? If all the, the answers are no, then know that all you're doing is that you're torturing yourself if you follow the feelings of liking or having a crush. Okay? It'll go away and you will move on. But don't act on it because it can lead you to bad places. I have had these experiences with young people, past and present. I've been teaching for about, what, 16, 17 years. And I do a bit of counseling, student counseling. So these students do come to me, Muslims. And you always have this story, all the time, brothers and sisters. And I think parents should really start to learn about these terminologies and talk to their children about, and I dare to say it, the word sexuality, love, liking, relationships from a young age. Talk to them about puberty from the age of 9 or 10, even 8. For the girls especially because they reach puberty before boys. Talk about these topics and let it be a normal topic that you as parents can talk with your children. Children, talk with your parents. Talk about your experiences. How did you meet their mum? How did you meet their dad? But, you know, within reason. Let them talk to you rather than talking to someone else. I know a brother who I learned this from. He says, I say to my daughter all the time, she is an angel. I even joke with her with uh, cheap lines like, did it hurt when you fell from heaven because you're an angel. These cheap pickup lines. He says them to his daughter. His daughter says, come on, dad. That's, you know, you don't say stuff like that. But she became normalized to it so that he said to me, because I know some other boys are going to come and use cheap lines to pick her up. So I'm going to beat them to it. And whenever they say it, she says, oh, my dad says those to me. My brother says that to me. So brothers and sisters, get that used to it so that she doesn't, she doesn't fall for the praise who just want to prey on her. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, brothers and sisters. So I'm going to move on from the word, from this thing called uh, crush. And by the way, love, love really comes after you've met somebody and you've lived together for a while. Uh, marriage doesn't necessarily have to have intense love from the beginning. Marriage can build the love or can crush the love later on. It depends on how you build it, how you are there for each other. As a man said to Umar ibn Khattab, I like this person, I trust him. He says, did you travel with him? Did you uh, stay at his house? Have you done any business trade with him? He said, no. He said, then you don't know him. Don't say you just like him. You just like what you see or what you can imagine he is. So really in marriage, you get to know each other more. And you just learn about the important things that you need to know for a marriage. And understand that when you marry someone, you're bringing two families together. You're, sometimes you're bringing tribes together. Tribes. Some people, Lebanese, Turkish, Somalian, marrying Asian, whatever. Islam allows all these types of marriages and makes no distinction so long as you are compatible and you're good for each other. We bring countries together through marriage. It's not just you and him or you and her. It's not Hollywood where you both hold hands and walk out into the sunset as if the whole world doesn't exist. You have families together. So talk to older people. Talk to wise people. Talk to your parents. There's nothing wrong with saying to mum, what's a crush? I have a crush on this boy. Let her talk to you. Let dad talk to you. It's all right. Talk to older people so they can guide you and not just your little friends who are around you. Because in Arabic, the friend that you have at school or the friend that you have who's your same age, the only thing they can really do for you is just to lean on them, to hug them and cry, or just to talk and they say, oh, I'm here. But really, they can't do much. They can't advise you more than what you know. A 13-year-old girl getting advice from another 13-year-old girl, what's she going to know? She only knows what she knows. But getting advice from a mother or an aunt who was older or some or a teacher or anybody else who is older, like an older sister who can advise you or a brother or a father, these people can advise you and can guide you in a better way. So always good to have a friend or a family member who is older than you you can take advice from. Uh, a friend who is at school who is your age is called Rafiq. In Arabic, Rafiq means the elbow. Mirfaq. comes from Mirfaq because Arabic is so particular with names and there are eight different types of friends mentioned in the Quran one of them is Rafiq and Rafiq is an elbow which means you can only lean on them just share your emotions with them and that's about it 
but they can't really solve much for you. Okay, so you need a wali. A wali means someone older who is responsible for you, who's invested in you, like your father, your uncle, your brother. Uh, if you have a son, for example, your mother, all these who are invested in you, that what happens to you will affect them. These people can guide you better.